well, break from uh, doing these live sessions nonetheless. How are you doing? Just clicking a few buttons in the background, gonna pop this on the, uh, the YouTubes. That should be uh, in a moment. Let me just check the chats because I was told last time that the. Break from. Uh, oh, let's pop that on there. Mute. Do, do, do. Attendees can chat with everyone. I don't know why that the defaults change on that. Just pop a little uh, you here in the chat box and uh, we'll see if that's working. Good morning, lads. Working. There we go. Got all the buttons pressed in the right order this time. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Radiance, absolutely radiance. <laughs> Bab, you look so we're uh, live. Right, let's get uh, into it. Into it. So we're going to be looking at uh, the markets. Going to be looking at uh, stocks. Going to be looking at futures. Going to be looking at uh, all things to do with making money from the financial markets. Do, 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 which is, as you all know, uh, me uh, stalling for uh, time while I remember to get my drawing widgets up. Uh, I've got a new setup, uh, as most of you know, I'm still getting a little bit used to it. Uh, so technically it's all the same things, but you know, it's just does it a little bit differently sometimes, but uh, oh, we're getting there. Come on, there we go, we're working. Right. <clears throat> So chat boxes on the YouTubes and uh, if you're watching this here with me on Zoom are active. I've got them all working properly. Let's do it. So uh, if you're looking to swing trade the stock markets, uh, the financial markets, crypto markets, uh, futures markets, day trading, um, then you're in the right place. Uh, if you're looking for underwater basket weaving, then uh, it's the door, the door down the corridor, the virtual corridor. Um, I'm a huge advocate, huge fan of the trading should be simple. Uh, not because it's catchy or because it's um, something cool and it's a nice little sound bite. Like I'm just a poor farm boy uh, who figured a few things out. I want simplicity for me first. Um, I've done the complexity. I've done the algorithms, the mathematical equations, and uh, you, you know, taking your shoes and socks off to uh, add up and divide is um, a waste of time. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just it's not for me. What I want is simplicity. Um, and after 28 years, what I'm trying to do with these open sessions is to try and give back as much as possible. My uh, self-proclaimed job, if you like, is to give you the right tools, rules, software to assist you, a community to support you, and a mentor, if you'd allow me to, to show you the right way so that you can get real results fast. And I'm actually just reminded as I... Um, as I'm saying that, I got a lovely email. I'm just trying to get it very quickly uh, from an old, 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 old uh, acquaintance. He was in my um, live room back in 2005, and he's just sent me this message just the other day, 10th of August. Um, I wanted to thank you again. You were one of the first great traders I learned from that brought me to this level. And he's just got his, um, he's just been funded by, um, a company called Apex who fund traders. So he's just been given a huge account. So I'm very pleased that I was able to uh, help him along the path. He did put a lot of hard work in to get there, but it's just wonderful to get these messages that, um, you know, even years later, the impacts that you have, it's, uh, it gets paid forward, which is always wonderful to see. Anyway, um, my uh, goal, again, is to break down my number one and my number two strategy. I have six main patterns that I trade. Most of the time, it's the one that I'm about to show you. I refer to everything that I do collectively as production line trading. Um, again, for the reasons I mentioned before, I want a rule-based trading system. I want to go step one, step two, step three, like a factory, like a production line. You know, I, I want to move away from the discretion uh, decisions for myself. That really just creates uh, uncertainty, the second guessing, the doubts, the have I done the right thing. And when you get right down to it and you can define what you're doing to the nth degree, you have what is in an essence an algorithm. Again, I refer to mine as production line trading. And all this is is a simple rule-based system. It's proven, it's profitable, repeatable, um, and takes 20 to 30 minutes a day a few times a week. And as I've already suggested, one of the things that I uh, teach is uh, buying the dip. But most people don't know what buying the dip actually means. And I love this meal. I've got to admit, I'm a whole huge um, 
and uh, princess bride fan as well so this uh is uh quite i find it amusing it amuses me if anything but like btfd by the dip doesn't mean what people think it means you've got to add a qualifier with anything with any strategy with any theory you've got to add a qualifier and that's the bit that's missing so i'm going to show you how to find a buyable dip in an uptrend and specifically it, that's what makes it a dip worth buying so let's look at this right now let's you know just get right into it and um, there's, if you want to take a screenshot, feel free, go right ahead. There's uh, three, uh, in essence, rules that I'm doing. And then the fourth one is to get in the trade. Now, I appreciate that this is the back of the envelope version. There's a little bit more to it. There's a few more specifics and nuances. Uh, but for most people, this is enough. I've been trading this way or some variation of it for almost 28 years now. Um, so uh, what we're going to look for is, first of all, uh, the classic trend trading rules. Just got my drawing widgets to the ready. So we're going to be looking for, uh, there we go. So the first thing is that little crossover there. Number one, the 50 needs to be above the 200, and that will give us a bullish trend. And then you're going to wait 20 bars, 20 days, 20 hours, whatever the time frame that you're on. This is the daily chart. That's my usual uh, swing trading preference. Uh, we're going to wait 20 bars. The reason why you're waiting for that is to avoid whipsaws and false starts. And again, it's not an automatic buy indication. Please keep that in mind. Um, it is an indication to help us with direction. So number one, waits for the 50 to be above the, uh, the 200 moving average. Wait 20 uh, days, and then you're going to find a buyable dip. Dip worth buying is how I phrased it before. And that is when price comes back below the 50 period moving average. And again, you'll notice from the time of the initial crossover, the initial push, uh, you might be thinking FOMO, chase the trade. When you've got a trend, they can last for months, um, you know, sometimes years. And this is just uh, from the end of 2020 uh, to, you know, well into 2021. So it's just missing off the last few months, which is the bear market side of things. So... Where was I? Yeah, so number one, so wait 20 bars, number two, and then we're going to find a dip worth buying. So when price pulls back below, I'm going to just going to focus on the 50 period move of an average. You could also add in the 20, but just for simplicity, let's just focus on the 50 period move of an average. So that's this line here. So you've got the 200 right there, and then you've got the 50 period move of an average right there. Uh, the third one, uh, which is just in the background, is the 20 period. So you can use both. Again, just for simplicity, you're waiting for price to come below the 50 period move and average. That makes it a buyable dip. And then when price goes back above, that's going to be your uh, indication to participate in what could be what I refer to as a phase three trend, the pushing trending part. And when uh, and again, if you just uh, identify again, it does that briefly there. So this is one that didn't work out. It goes back below and then back above right there. Now, what we're looking for is if price stays above the moving averages, the 50 and the 200, that is your trending part of the move. That's the bit that you're trying to profit from. So all these uh, circles, they're highlighting Bible dips or a dip worth buying. You know, it, it makes you sit up and pay attention to then say, okay, now I'm interested. Now, again, it's not an automatic buy because it can stay below the moving average, uh, you know, for, you know, uh, one, three, five, 10 days a week. It might never go back above the 50, but when it does, that's the time that you're going to profit from the movement. And again, this is the back of the envelope version just for speed. Wanted to get it out there straight away. Uh, but nonetheless, that is in essence what I'm doing. And this is just one of six money making patterns. Just flip it over. You'll have number two, and that'll be to sell the rally in a downtrend. Now, in case you're wondering if it works over on the right here, we can see the 20 year equity curve. So when you've got the rules down to such uh, a specific uh, and quantifiable, if this, then that, it becomes an algorithm. So I can plug those, you know, uh, base set of rules into this software, this trade station, and say, you know, if I just bought the dip, just buy the dips. I don't think about it. I don't apply discretion. I don't uh, deviate. I don't hesitate. Effectively, just let the computer do it if I wanted to. If I took every trade in the last 20 years, what would have happened? What would have happened? This is what a positive equity curve or pos uh, positive expectancy looks like. There's the zero line right there. So you've got a nice steady equity curve. If I'd taken every trade without deviation, without hesitation um, over the last 20 years. So this is what gives me confidence to know that, you know, I've got a strategy that works 
And in this case, I'm also applying it on a market that is favorable. The S&P 500 is what most people call the markets. And I can also then just at the click of a button, and we'll look at this in a moment in real time, but I can then click on uh, the button that spits out the uh, the back testing and say, you know, does it work on Apple? Does it work on SQM? Does it work on mining stocks? Does it work on um, uh, farming stocks? Does it work on defense stocks? Does it work on ETFs? Does it work on crypto? Does it work on a 60 minute charts? You get where I'm going with this. I get to validate what I'm doing because I've quantified what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Just put a little, uh, yes, we get it, Phil. Please move on in the chat box and I will move on. Does that make sense first and foremost? I'm not doing anything overtly complex. There's there's actually four rules, you know, but the, the fourth one being buy the dip when it goes back above the moving averages. So it's basically one, two, and three is find a trend, find a dip worth buying. And then number four is to buy said dip. Really straightforward. Now, I'm sometimes asked, does it work? As, as you've already gathered, I don't need to second guess. Does it work on stocks, futures, for crypto? Does it work on day trading, short-term swing trading, long-term swing trading? The answer is yes. There's something that works for everyone. There's a style and a methodology for everyone, regardless of your personal situation. And the more I'm refining what I'm doing, the more I'm working with uh, my programmer to code things up, the more I can validate this. So for example, I can look for daily swings, sometimes known as day trading. I'll open and close on the same day. I can know today if there's a trade tomorrow. That's really cool to know. And also to know that I'm trading the right stocks that behave favorably for the style of trading that I want to use. I can also look for daily swings on futures. And this is uh, just last week, um, 10 days ago now, actually, um, I got the latest uh, iteration of the algo that allowed me to segment times through the day. What I know now is something that I've known for 20 years. This is actually how I started uh, trading uh, all the way back when I full time back in 2001. Um, but I was looking for the main move of the day. Back then it was in Forex. Um, I can trade futures and I can put up a little time window said, hey, I, I'm going to be at the desk between 9 a.m. and uh, 12 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Is there a trading opportunity on futures between that time that makes it worthwhile? So I can quite literally check in at 10 a.m., set an entry, my exit stops and targets, and take profits at the market close. It's really straightforward. Again, just by trading um, a simple set, the one that I've just explained to you, but on, say, uh, um, looking for a daily swing on 60-minute charts using index futures. Now, can I do that with weekly swings on stocks. Yeah, it's the same rules. I'm going to get paid in, you know, around about seven to 10 days. I'll show you all of this in a moment. The click of a button, we can validate all of this information. My usual talking points is monthly swings. That's normally why we're all here. At the end of the day, I will know if there's something for me to do tomorrow. Is there a trading opportunity to place tomorrow or this week for, for that matter. You don't have, it's not necessarily time sensitive, but the same strategy that I've just shown you on the S&P futures that uses the daily charts. And I will produce monthly swings on stock, stock options, ETFs, futures. It's all the same rules. And, you know, this is the, the strategy that's again, just the back of the envelope version I've just mentioned to you at the click of a button, I can historically back test the last 20, 30, however much data I've got 50 years, if I want any time frame. Um, and just validate, is this a, is this strategy uh, favorable for this stock and this time frame or this ETF and time frame or this crypto and time frame or the future? You get where we're going. There's no more second guessing. Are you doing, am I doing the right thing? Yes. So if you get stopped out on that particular uh, chart, you know it's not you. You know that it's not you know, something weird that is going on, you don't have to second guess. You, what you do know is that on average, if you put the next trade on, the next trade on, the next trade on, on average, you'll have an on average return over multiple occurrences. So you're not looking for one trade to make it work. You're looking for multiple trades over multiple occurrences over many days, weeks, and months to make it work. And um, 
A couple of recent examples are, again, S&P futures. There's that Bible dip in the context of a trend. There's the rally. There's the retracement. There's the 20-period move and average. At 10 a.m., place the trade. You know, it goes on, and we get a nice uh, movement. This lasted about four hours on 16th of March. Uh, sorry, um, on 60-minute charts uh, just the other day. So, again, just trying to illustrate to it that with some recent examples that does this work? Yeah, of course it works. Um, again, VLO, this is actually my um, favorite trade of the year. This, uh, I've got to admit, this was, um, I'm cheesing a little bit. I didn't get out when I was supposed to. So just because of uh, fortunate events, just with the, the trade management, but there was multiple opportunities to get in. And this produced a 1,418% uh, return on capital. I typically use options to place my trades. Um, and uh, the last one we'll move on is, uh, again, a day trade. Does it work day trading? Yes, you've got sellable rallies in the context of a downtrend. So there's the uh, the closing bell. I'll show what this looks like actually in a moment. We've got the closing bell yesterday, the opening bell. There's your uh, sell-off. There's your rally. There's the average price crossing over. So there's your rally in a downtrend. And there's multiple opportunities. And this is a two-minute chart uh, on AMD in case you're well, uh, AMD in case you're wondering. And this lasts about three hours. Um, and again, the good thing is, is that I'm neither sitting here looking at the charts. You know, I typically place my trades and walk away. And um, because I've got these rules defined, it's like it, it's either going to hit stops or targets or at a predetermined time window. If I'm doing the short term trading, I will close the trade. And again, it all comes back to uh, where's my slide? It all comes back to this strategy, this rules that I've just explained to you. So there's not, nothing different going on. It's just we get to validate, hey, shoot, is it possible for me to trade the two-minute chart on AMD? Actually, yeah, that looks pretty cool. What about um, Amazon? Is it Should I trade and get paid at the end of the week on Amazon 60-minute charts? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Let's, let's look at it. Now, obviously, I get my own results. Again, I've showed you one or two examples. Again, I've got quite literally um, hundreds, if not thousands of examples. I'm skipping through them very, very quickly just to illustrate that it's just not one uh, chart, one um, opportunity that works. What's most important to me is that it's replicatable. And again, it's not just me saying it's replicatable because, hey, Phil, you're a product of your own system. Of course, you're going to get results. Um, but my students regularly tell me that they get results. And that is really what makes... Um, doing these sessions worthwhile. Uh, does it work with when the market's crashing? Uh, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> the, when the market's moving hard and fast, uh, they move. Now, again, just in the interest of full disclosure, it's not always rosy. You know, I'm sitting through some um, painful retracements with these huge rallies in the market. We've spoke about those before. I took my break away a few weeks ago. I was talking about the same thing. You know, these huge rallies, there's very few bullish setups for me at the moment. So I'm sitting through some drawdown on my portfolio. I'm sure it'll turn back around. It's not the first time I've experienced it. It won't be the last time, but just to balance it out, it's not always sunshine and, yeah, absolutely, Brett. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. The thing that keeps me sane is I've got small position size on multiple trades. And again, normally what would balance things out is I'll have a, 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 a uh, a number of bearish trades, uh, which I've already got, and a number of bullish trades. But the, despite the rally, there's actually very few bullish trades setting up. Exactly, Brett. I'm just reading the comments there in case wondering, uh, anyone's wondering. There is, um, it's part of the trader's life. You know, sometimes um, there's a little bit of an imbalance in the portfolio. And uh, one of the ways around that might be uh, just to, in the interest of disclosure, Brett, I know you're in our community, um, but uh, you know, have a look, look at uh, some of the 60 minute chart setups. Again, I'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at uh, in a moment, but it just gives you some shorter term uh, trade cycles. And it's not that much more time intensive. Uh, as long as you can check in once or twice a day, you know, is there a trade there? Yes or no. If yes, place a trade. If no, come back tomorrow or later in the week. So it's, it's, it's not time intensive is the point. Anyway, I think that's it. So there's the um, the quick uh, back of the envelope uh, introduction to the strategy and uh, what I'm doing. There's uh, six other patterns, but this is the, the buy the dip version, as I've already mentioned. Uh, again, there's a few other um, entry and trade management criteria, but nonetheless, that this will get you to the point of finding buyable dips in the context of a trend. Again, you don't want to buy any dip, any down movements. You want to find a dip worth buying, as I've already said uh, a few times. Right. So, uh, with that said, uh, if you are new, welcome. Let me just uh, check the um, chat box. Uh, so we've got, uh, hello, Glenn. It's been a while. Brett, obviously, you've been talking. Uh, Charles, uh, new name, Charles. I think your first time here. We've got Ian on regular. 
uh, is it uh, Jean? There we go. Johns, Carl, Perry, of course, Perry, Randall, you're not my friend. Um, <laughs> Rodrigo, Radiant, uh, Ruben. Ruben, you're in twice there, mate. I think you logged in twice. Uh, Seng, am I saying that right? Uh, there we go, yeah. Uh, and Stephen, Vito, and obviously Zeke. So I think we've got a nice uh, tight community today again. I have taken a few days break. We've normally got a few more people, but nice to see some new faces. So the way that the session goes is we're going to spend about 60 minutes uh, talking about the charts. Uh, I've already explained what I'm doing, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. So I'm going to spend two minutes, uh, probably 30 seconds, actually, just who I am. And we're going to get straight into the uh, stock setups and reviews. We're going to look at multiple timeframes. Again, I've already explained the strategy uh, that we use. Again, no preamble uh, with that uh, today. Uh, it is possible if you want to go further, faster and smarter, uh, you can work in there closely. This is the hard pitch or as hard a pitch as you'll get uh, with me. Um, if you want to work with me, you can send me a message. We can talk about it. If it's not right for you, I'll let you know. Uh, I am a trader first and an educator second. I do the education side of things because I love doing it. But I've got to admit, I am not cheap. Um, my, you know, I've spent a lot of time making it work. Uh, but nonetheless, I do get results for everyone who does uh, decide to work with me. Anyway, if you just want to get the most out of these free sessions, the way you get most value is to interact is to interact, like, comment, ask questions, pop a yoo-hoo in the chat box, uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. And I see Chris, you're on the um, on the the uh, on the, on the YouTube. Hello, Chris. Uh, so, uh, if you've got a question, pop a comment, and as soon as I see it, I will get to it. Quick warning before we do get into the charts: uh, there will be no diamond hands. There's no two of the moon. Um, I use rules, as you already uh, probably gathered. I use rules: if this, then that. And uh, what I, I do not want to do is to sit at the desk all day, every day, flicking through chart after chart like a mindless zombie, wondering if the next one is the, the one. If you ever find yourself looking at charts or even thousands of charts and you're wondering where the trade is, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, when you uh, And that's how you know if you're looking at charts wondering where something is. Um, and the way to get past that is de to define what you're looking for even more. You may have a loose idea of what you're looking for, but define it even more. If this, then that, create an algorithm. And you go from where's the trade to there's the trade. And that's what we do in our community. Um, again, I've explained what I'm doing. It's literally find a Bible dip in the context of a trend, and we can go, there is the trade. And it's rules that allow me to do that. Um, Unfortunately, they're very boring. Um, it, I refer to what I do as a production line, which does illustrate the boredom factor. Uh, but I would rather make money and be bored than uh, to try and make it up as we go along and have that where's the trade experience. And as mentioned, if you are new to these sessions, my name is Phil Newton. I'm just a regular guy. Um, I have not worked in the industry. I am not a Wall Street guru. You should most definitely not listen to anything that I say and take it as financial advice. Um, Past performance is no guarantee of future performance, et cetera, et cetera. We're responsible adults. It's your money, not my money. Again, act like a responsible adult. A little bit of common sense. If you're looking for financial advice, go and speak to a financial advisor. What I can do is show you what I've been doing for the last almost 30 years uh, on the hard right edge of the chart. You get all the benefits of my experience, my research, and the things that I've done so that you can speed up your learning curve and your developments. Again, I have cracked the code. I'm going to show you uh, that again in a moment. Um, uh, and basically it gets results. Uh, I don't really need to see all the other stuff, but nonetheless, um, uh, what we're looking at today is a part of a mechanical trading system. Again, we've already looked at that, uh, but it's part of a larger process that allows uh, you to benefit from the markets. So with that said, let's go and nerd on some charts. Now, while I'm just uh, taking a quick drink to wet my whistle, um, if you've got a question, if you've got uh, any stocks that you want to look at, want to review, I can plug them into the algo for you and we can decide together if it's worth trading. So let's go and do it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Quick slurp, there we go. <clears throat> right, so let's start off on the in fact before we actually get into the individual setups uh, one of the things that i would like to look at and randy you mentioned this you kind of sparked this but i was looking at it uh, again we have discussed it in our um accelerator sessions but i just wanted to look at this rally and one of the things that we can consider is this bear market rally here and all i'm doing is taking a 
um, on trade stations, a trend line tool. Some platforms have a uh, what you call it a, a measuring stick. Uh, so all I'm doing is measuring the low. At the low to the high there. So measuring the low point there to the high point there. And as a percentage, that rally is an 18.92% movement. Now, one of one of the stats that you probably heard touted around on the um on the media, on the news cycles, is that um, a bear market rally can rally 20% from the lows. And we're almost there. And we're just nudging against that 200 period move on average. And I find this quite interesting. And it's quite interesting in comparison. Now, what I'd like to do actually before I, let me just park that over there at the, the, at the way. I'm going to put the weekly charts on uh, because it will be a little bit easier to see. So bear with me. I'm going to go back. Uh, as much and look at as much data as I can, but that rally, uh, that rally is currently at eighteen point five two percent. Now, what I like here, uh, before I actually uh, move on, do do do. Let's just zoom in. One of the things that I like about uh, so we're on the weekly charts for change. We don't normally spend time here, but one of the uh, things that I do like is this development bar. So the fact that we've got this exhaustion bar, what could be considered an exhaustion bar developing, uh, could suggest that we're about to see at least some kickback. I don't think we're going to flip back into a bull market just yet, although I can't discount it completely. Again, mechanically, I've got to say when we're back above the 200, I've got to be bullish because that's what the algorithm, that's what the data says. Um, but for the moment, we've got this last chance for the bears as we kick back off the 200 period moving average. And you can see just over here that the start of this bear movement down earlier on in the year, back in April, um, is a prevalence. Now on the daily charts, that had already uh, so, uh, sold off again. Remember, we are looking at the weeklies for the moment. Now, what I'd like to do next, mm -mm 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 -mm, where's my thing? There we go. Uh, what I'd like to do next is just skip back to 2002 on the weeklies. Now, what we can see, so sorry, this is 2001 uh, right here. So we've got that 2001. So why, why are we doing this? You know, as traders, we're looking for clues in history that might help us understand what will happen next. We're looking for a, uh, a, a clue, a footprint, so that we can say, okay, well, what may happen next? And the first thing that springs to mind, again, we're going to look at bear markets in history. And um, the last bear, or not the last bear market, one of the first bear markets that I actually participated in, I actually started full-time trading during this bear market. Uh, in uh, 2001. I think I went full time back in uh, February. Again, prior to then, I was trading for a, a prop shop, uh, but trading my own accounts around February, March uh, 2001. But the thing that catches my attention is this similar uh, exhaustion bar. Again, keep in mind, we're still on the weekly charts, but that exhaustion bar there looks very similar to the one that we were just looking at. Now, what I've also got here, because uh, here's one I prepared earlier, I can put that uh, trend line there. It's going to take it from the low, going to mark it up to the high there. And it looks like we've got a 23% rally in what we know to be a down uh, market, a bear market. You might remember we have the dot-com bubble uh, burst around about this time, the huge tech rally in the late 90s. Uh, that bubble had burst. Uh, and again, we've got almost a, a carbon copy footprint from back again, back in uh, what have we got? May, June in 2001 to suggest that we've got this similar footprint. So we've got a clue to say, well, what could happen next? And we can look to see that, you know, next week, the week after, we may see a little bit of sideways for one to two uh, weeks. Again, remember, this is the weekly charts. And then we may see price meander over. Now, I don't necessarily think that we're going to see um, the, the market hit new lows but hey you know we've got to trade what we see at, the, at um when it happens i do think we're going to see some downward movements and i do then think that we're going to see some sideways movements uh, i like that phrase i might swipe that brett's brett's just saying the slope of hope <laughs> yeah it is interesting so what we can see more than anything is that 
we can expect the market to uh, possibly sell off. Now, whether it makes a new low or not is another question. I'm not saying that. Um, I fall into the trap of trying to trade my opinion previously, but this is normally how the markets unfold. Prices, uh, for want of a better description, retest. In this case, it went a little bit lower. And then we'll normally see price meander sideways before the next possible leg of the movements, either a bullish move uh, or a bearish move. So these, these movements happen time and time again. So now obviously we're looking at this with a little bit of hindsight, but we can see that there's that, uh, again, rally retracement sideways. That's what we expect to happen when the market is about to recover. So what, what we'll actually do is uh, let's just measure this low. How deep was this rally? So I'm just going to get my trend line. And I'm just going to, don't need to extend it right. Uh, let's get the show me the percentages. So again, this is on TradeStation, so I can just say show label, write justify, let's make it a bit bigger. No, I don't need to write justify, I need to um, show the percentage change, um, and let's do that. So this is a 30% rally, look at that, 30% rally. So we can see huge movements uh, and still have it considered to be a bear market. And this is a bear market rally. Again, what you'll see, a lot of times is the um, price retests the low and then it goes sideways for three to six months and then we see the recovery. And this um, basing price action, that's pretty common. The the, the recent sell-off back in uh, 2020, it didn't happen there. And that's you know, what I often refer to as, I, you know, I got bent over uh, the stock market's knee and spanked because my, I tried to trade my opinion. And it, there's this opinion um, that was based on uh, historical expectation. And to be fair, I wasn't the only one. There's a lot of institutional traders that had uh, a similar situation uh, in the markets. Now, what we can also do is I'm just skipping forward. We can also look back at, uh, again, the stock market crash of 2008. Now, in fairness, the stock market crash is later on in the year right there. So there's the actual crash. But before the crash happens, we were already in a bear market. So you've got the, the double top. So this is 2007. And for anyone that was trading at the time, you know, the, the market had topped in 2007. We, you got that um, bear market. You got the daily average price crosses over. Um, and so this bear market rally here was an 18% rally. So again, I'm just going back to the point. There's lots of evidence to suggest that while we're in this huge rally in the markets, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're out of the woods and we're not going to see any further bearish movements. Now, I don't think we're going to see a crash. We've just had a crash. So I don't think we're going to see a second crash within two years. I think that would be... Um, unexpected. Normally a crash and a crash is something in excess of 20% down. Let me say that again. A crash is usually considered as anything in excess of 20% down. And usually in a very short space of time, you know, 15 to 20 days um, would be normal. That's what happened in the COVID crash. Um, and they happen on average once every 10 years. The crash cycle is about every 10 years. The correction cycle, which is 15, uh, anywhere from 10 to 15% and up to, up to 20%, that usually happens once a, once a year. And it usually happens around March or around October. We've got like a, a, um, a correction season. So we've still got the opportunity to see price retest the lows um, possibly quite fast and still not see the market crashing. So anyway, kind of um, nerding out a little bit over the uh, time, but again, we've got the similar thing. We've got the engulfing patterns. We've got the rallies, retracements, uh, and subsequent sell-offs. So what's the point of, of doing all this? Is we keep saying we're looking for clues to try and identify like what might happen next. That's what we're trying to figure out. What might happen next? That's all we're trying to do. What might happen? So we've seen then 18% rally to here. There's that um, possible bearish uh, exhaustion bar, similar to earlier in the year on the weeklies and similar to historical uh, examples in similar circumstances. So what may happen next? You know, we will we see price retest the lows? It's a possibility. Um, at the very least, we could expect a 50% uh, 
move down. So 50% of this rally up and see price come back to 4,000. That would be an absolute bare minimum expectation. Uh, we could see then price retest the lows. Uh, and ultimately, we could see a bear market lasting uh, another you know, 6, 8, 12 months. It is possible, uh, as we've seen in the 2001 sell-off. Again, things are, are um, what's the phrase? Things are a little bit fluid as to what might happen. But the point is, is we've got scenarios for possibilities. Um, and at the very least, a move lower, um, again, move lower. So once now, the absolute bear move, move lower down to 4,000. And then that meandering sideways is a, a possibility before seeing a, a recovery. So that could take us into the end of the year before we see either uh, new lows being made and the continuation of the bear market and uh, you know what could be economic disaster if you were to believe the media. Um followed by a little bit of sideways movement. So before there's any new lows or recovery uh, unfolding, you know, we could ultimately just see price dither and meander um, between these levels for, uh, you know, right up to the end of the year. Do -do -do. Right, let's uh, just do -do 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 -do. So interesting, just observational analysis, observational analysis. This is what I quite like. So that's an 18% rally. Um, in the, and we're still below on the daily charts, the 200 period moving average. Very interesting stuff. So we've got precedence for further moves down. So there's, so back on the daily, so back to uh, the, these previous levels here. So that could be interesting. It looked like it was just trying to develop a little bit of a box there. So if we saw that approximately 50% move down, so 50% of the move up is what I'm talking about. So come down to 4,000, big psychological round number. That'll be the absolute minimum expectation uh, before seeing if we're going to go further um, or we're going to go sideways at this level and then we start to see recovery. And that could take us, you know, in the next three, uh, four months as an absolute minimum, possibly into the end of the year again just talking about the same thing but in re, uh, in relation to the daily charts this time do, do, do. so from the algos so that's that opinion so i only do the the um opinion stuff on the the index just so i've got a, a possible expectation of what may happen next from the algos point of view um, we're at the uh, 200 there. The 50 period moving average is down there. So on the uh, the index futures, there's no real trade yet until we're below 4,000. Uh, again, obviously over time, if the moving average comes back up, uh, you're looking for price to move below all three moving averages, as I explained at the top of the session today. So the index futures are probably going to be on the sidelines uh, for a wee while, uh, which happened at the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year is right there. We went below uh, the 50 the 200 is there and ultimately went sideways uh, for mostly until April until we went into this crossover and then we got some great moves to the downside so um, patience is our friend as always when it comes to uh, looking for trading opportunities so the index futures again is certainly a, a wait and watch for the moment either bullish or bearish for that matter uh, but certainly wait and watch it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no trading opportunities because there's always plenty of trading opportunities to be had. Um, and as I promised you uh, earlier, this is the S&P. So uh, on this platform, the rules that are mentioned to the buy the dip, the sell the rally. If I just bought the dip and sold the rally and didn't think about it at all, then we've got uh, what we call a positive expectancy. This goes all the way back to 1998. It needs a little bit of lead time. So it actually starts around uh, the year 2000, uh, picking up the data. Uh, but we've got a, what's called a positive expectancy. If I just bought the dip and sold the rally, and did nothing else, didn't think about it. I didn't have an opinion on the markets and um, just traded the setups uh, mechanically and clinically. Then this is what we've got, a positive expectancy uh, strategy, which is a fancy way of saying, does it make money? Yes, it does. Now, we, now, while we're waiting, um, we can also look at uh, individual trade opportunities. So let me just go actually to the 60-minute charts. I uh, mentioned earlier, you know, what if you want to trade the uh, the lower time frames? Again, this is the S&P on 60-minute charts now. And uh, what you may be for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you can see that the algo um, that's coded up, uh, it's just printing all the 
uh, the, tr the possible trades on the charts. Uh, we've got some nice trades. So right now we've got, you know, nothing but between the 50, between the 200, there's that weight situation that we mentioned. We might just be seeing price turn over on the 60 minute chart. So while the daily charts is saying, you know what, let's just sit back and wait. We've got a little bit of a distance before, um, you know, down at the, the 4,000 level before the daily charts are interested. But you know what, the, um, the do do let's tidy things up. Right, there. oops, that didn't work. I've got a new drawing thing that's not playing nice. There's the 50, there's the 200. They're going to cross over soon. So maybe as soon as next week, we're going to get that crossover on the 60 minute chart and we can start selling rallies in a downtrend on the 60 minute chart. So, that, so we don't have to um, just sit back and wait for the daily chart set. If, you, if you've got a little bit of extra time, you can zero in on opportunities on the 60. So what I've done is I've loaded up the last 10 years of Again, this time I've gone back to 2008. Do, do, do. So beginning of 2008, so it includes the crash is the point. So it includes, so uh, February, oh, I don't know why I've got uh, the 2nd of um, uh, January, but 2nd of January, 2008. Uh, if you're on Zoom, you can pinch the screen. You can look at the dates so you can see that I'm not uh, just blowing uh, smoke in your sails. Um, but again, we've got a nice positive expectancy strategy. This time, because we're on 60-minute charts, we're looking at a huge amount of data, almost 1,100 trades in the last 10 to 12 years on 60-minute charts. What do you think? Does this give you confidence to go, you know, at 10 a.m. Eastern, as we said earlier, at 10 a.m., is there a trade? If yes, place the trade and come back at the end of that. Now, this is just day trade, one trade a day or every other day is what it's looking for. It's not time intensive. Is there a trade at 10 a.m. Eastern? If yes, place the trade, come back at 4 p.m. Eastern and either uh, take profits. It will happen automatically if it hits targets or close the trade at whatever the profit is at 4 p.m. That's a pretty cool way to trade. You know, and this is what rules allow me to do. I can get to validate, you know, I'm, I'm available at the market open or around the market open right about now. And um, I don't want to sit here all day, every day. I can just put my trade on and walk away and go to the shops or go to the meeting or spend time with the family. I don't have to be glued to the screen all day, every day. And you can still do these short-term trading opportunities, which I really, really like. This really drives every decision that I make is how can I get the benefits of insert the, the, the styles of trading that you may want to consider, whether it's day trading stocks, index futures, crypto, you know, I don't want to sit here all day, every day. And this is the, the guiding force behind every strategy that I've developed uh, over the years. Uh, it actually started out um, uh, being having that decision forced on me um, because uh, for most of you know, the sob story version of my background is I've got Crohn's disease. Um, when I, uh, back 2000, 2001, 2002, I was diagnosed uh, with quite a severe uh, bout of it, uh, for want of a better description. If you don't know what it is, I won't explain it. You can Google it yourself. It's quite serious. Uh, it nearly killed me. Um, but I got tired and still to this day get tired quite easily. So it's forced on me that I've got a very short window of opportunity to trade. Um before I just want to, I just want to fall, like through illness, fall asleep. Um, so that's where that kind of logic came into. And then obviously fast forward several years, you know, on the road to recovery, you know, that I'm not as tired, I'm not as fatigued on a regular basis. So I can spend a bit more time doing it, but you know what, why should I, you know, why should we sit all day, every day, we get the benefits of active trading, um, whilst being essentially very passive with our engagement in the market. So again, we don't need to sit and look through every chart every day. Now, I promised you a, um, a day trade setup. So, uh, so, so no today if you've got to trade tomorrow. Typically, what I like to do is look for a consolidation at the end of the day. So this is now two-minute charts. Uh, average prices are close together. So this is a consolidation. I love trading breakouts. I spent 12 years just trading this pattern. Um, and only this pattern, there's your consolidation, there's the breakout, wait for the breakout. So the breakouts, you're waiting for a pullback. Again, it's not happened there uh, just for the moment. This is AMD. Again, we have another one on, um, uh, I think Amazon. Again, another stock that I like to, to uh, short-term trade. Ooh, let's try that again, AMZN. So you should see the same thing again. I've already got it marked off. There we go. So already prepped for this. So we've got this nice, very obvious consolidation. Average prices squished together, prices consolidating. There's the breakout. 
a little tiny pause as opposed to a pullback. Again, I'd like to see price pull back to, you know, somewhere between that level there. Uh, it doesn't have to fill the gap, but if price was to pull back, I can sell the rally in a downtrend. The algo will pick up the trade should that happen as the 20 period moving average is starting to catch up with price. And if it doesn't set up, it's no big deal. Um, at 10 o'clock, uh, we're almost there now. Is the trade there? Yes or no? If yes, place the trade. If no, come back tomorrow again. I'm not worried about chasing moves and missing trades anymore. I'm far beyond that. I'd rather just check in, check for a trade and check out, and then I can go and enjoy myself. Uh, the other thing that we can look at is um, weekly chart. Uh, sorry, there's 60-minute chart. So again, I look at three or four charts. Oh, four, as you can see here. Uh, Amazon, AMD, Apple, and uh, the Google. Um but we can look for trading opportunities um, quite nicely. So again, if you don't have time to look at the, the opening bell and the first 30, 40 minutes, see, you know, know today if there's a trade tomorrow. If you don't have time at the open, you don't have to trade the open. It's no big deal. And this is what I mean by there's something for everyone. Uh, in the past, I've referred to this as, again, I refer to what I do as a production line, but this is like the dial on the production line. You can speed up the production line or slow it down depending on your situation. You don't have to day trade. You don't have to swing trade. You don't. You can get paid at the end of the day, the week, or the month. If you want to go even higher, go up to the weekly chart. You can get paid at the end of the quarter. Get paid at the end of the year with the same principles. And ultimately, we get to validate. You know what? What about Amazon? Should I trade Amazon on a sixty-minute chart? Should I look for buy the dips and sell the rallies? Well, let's not second guess ourselves let's just click a button should i buy the dip and sell the rallies on amazon let's look back at the last 10 years on 60 minute charts 280 trades looks great there's a lovely steady equity curve if i just bought the dip and sold the rallies in the way that i already explained to you that gives me a lot of confidence to just trade amazon and just wait for the setups and be like a, a almost like a farmer you know you, uh, you know, the, the, we've got four seeds, AMD, Amazon, Apple, and Google. There's four seeds here. And all I'm doing is waiting for the seed to grow, to present the setup. And if the trade sets up, I'm going to place the trade because the data says, you know what? Don't think about it. I don't need to do the extra analysis if I don't want to. And I think that, that gives me a, like a good measure of peace of mind. It certainly keeps me sane, especially when the markets are a little bit fickle, which they are at the moment from the daily chart version of the strategy, the get paid at the end of the month strategy. And they're a little bit fickle. There's few bullish setups. We're sitting through a 20% rally in the market and still not got a bullish trade to save my life. Uh, but now things are turning around. We've got some good opportunities. So should we trade, you know, which, 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 um, uh, which version of the strategy? Well, firstly, it's all the same strategy. Which version of the strategy is right for you? I don't know that. I honestly don't know that. The best way of thinking about these things is what time do you have available? If you've got 10, you know, let's just say uh, you've got 30 minutes. You've got 30 minutes a week. Maybe you should look at the daily or the weekly charts and you can curate your top 25 stocks uh, on though, you know, relative to your situation, okay, I'm going to follow the top 25 stocks and you can draw them from the wellspring of, uh, again, I provide all my um, traders with like, here's all the stocks that the algo works on. You have 300 stocks to choose from the best of the best of the best. Take a screenshot and, um, you know, have it with my love. Um, you know, does the strategy work on these stocks? I've already done that work for you. I've gone through them painstakingly one at a time and, and said, you know, here's all the stocks that the strategy works on. Uh, they all make money on a regular, consistent basis over the last 10 or 20 years. And there is, oh, there we go. I surprised myself. There's about 500 stocks there. So you've got plenty to choose from. So you don't have to look at every stock every day all the time. You can go, you know, which 25 stocks are in your price range? that are affordable for you. Because maybe you don't want to trade a $300 stock. Maybe you just want to trade a $30 stock. So let's go and find the 25 stocks that are in the $30 to $50 price range. Great. From that wellspring, right? Now you've got your top 25. The next question might be, like, now you're just going to sit back and, and trade those 25 stocks that are in your price range and farm the setups. Because the thing that we don't know is which setup will work. We don't know. So we can't cherry pick. The only thing that I do know is that they work on average over multiple occurrences. Again, let's look at back at the S&P. So this is the S&P over the last, uh, since um, the COVID crash. So the COVID crash, there's the um, uh, 
2020 there's the crash so price turned around you see we didn't get that double bottom retest that that's that's what spanked my ass i'm not going to lie to you um so uh, average price crosses over we've got the retest so the first trade uh, according to the algo wouldn't have worked out the second one made money the third one made money the fourth one made money the fifth one made money the sixth one lost some money the seventh one lost some money and the eighth one lost some money so i think so we got one two uh, sorry two three that didn't work and one two three four five that did i think that's a good ratio that's pretty common that's pretty typical so this is what i mean by it's an on average return some of them are going to make money some of them are going to lose money the ones that you make money on far outshadow the ones that you lose money on and that's what i mean by an on average return so because i don't know which one's going to work i've got to take every every setup on the top 25 stocks that i'm looking at and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to get an on average return from a small curated unique to you top 25 stocks relative and then suitable for your situation so that we can farm the profits from those top 25 stocks as you would if you had a real world business you would open i'd say that you wanted to start a shoe shop on the high streets I don't know why I pick shoe shop as an example, but you get the metaphor. If you had a real world business, you uh, would probably specialize in a certain style of shoe. You would, uh, you know, men's shoes, ladies shoes, maybe you do men's and women's, uh, but maybe you do dress shoes. Maybe you do fancy, maybe you do exhaust. I don't know what, I don't know enough about shoes to carry the metaphor, but you get what I'm saying. You'd probably be a specialist. You wouldn't try and sell clogs, for example, um, a little bit of a hard sell maybe, but you would specialize in either a popular shoe and um, the popular sizes and the popular designs, or you would have a boutique. You may be a specialist in uh, leather, thigh high uh, shit kickers. I don't know. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Brett's talking about his um, thigh high, um, thigh high zipped up boots that he wants to. As he mentions the fetish in the chat box. But you get what I'm saying. In the real world of business, <laughs> radiant. <laughs> you look radiant. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. You know, in the real world of business, even if you don't own a business or manage a business, you know, it's taken for granted that, yes, of course, I'm going to have a narrow focus in my business. I'm not going to own a shoe shoe shop on, on the high streets or the main streets. And then I'm not going to sell fidget spinners. I'm not going to sell Pokemons. I'm not going to sell bubblegum at the counter because I've got a fucking boutique shoe shop. You get what I'm saying? It's obvious that you don't do that. So why people continue to do it in the stock market they're trying to trade meme stocks um uh, uh, growth stocks you know um uh, chasing the move it's oh, it's going up it's going down uh, it, the, the latest thing on wall street bets uh, listening to jim Cramer talk about bullshit again uh, every tip he's made has lost money you know why would you want to listen listen to someone who consistently gives you gives people tips that consistently don't work you know think about it so you want you don't want to be a generalist again in the, the the medical world. The people who get paid the most are specialists, you know, specialists, you know, specialist vocations. The 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 general practitioners, the GPs of the medical world. The, don't get me wrong, they're well paid, but they're not as well paid as the brain surgeon. They're not as well paid as the specialist, and that's what I'm suggesting for you to do as a specialist. You get paid for having a narrow focus. You become the expert in the top 25 stocks on swing trading the daily charts, on um, you know getting the daily swing on index futures or the, or the morning swing on uh, the opening bell of a two-minute chart. You get what I'm saying? You specialize, specialize in what is uh, uh, what makes sense for you. So back into it. Back, what time do you I'll come back to you? I, I saw a squirrel, I chased it, folks. Bear with me. I'll get to, there is a point here and I will get to it. <laughs> you know, specialize in uh, what makes sense for you. Again, just because the two minute charts and the two minute strategy makes money, will it make money for you? Well, if you don't have time to day trade, it makes no sense to try and day trade. If you don't have time to, 
to look at uh, index futures uh, in between your regular daytime schedule. There's no point trying to get the main swing of the morning or the main swing of the day. What might make sense for most people, because it is good for most people, is at the end of the day, after the regular daytime commitments, you can have a look uh, after the market hours, uh, whatever time that makes sense to you, at any time during today, you can find out if there is an opportunity for tomorrow or the day after or possibly this week. So let's go and do that. So what I can do at the end of the day, again, this is the software. This is uh, the visual version of what I was describing earlier. So for example, do, 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 let's get my drawing widgets going. All right, so, okay, so over here on the left, you've got... Uh, blue, 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 and a blue there. So what that's saying is, is price is price is above the 200, and that gives you this first blue there. And then the next three are, so the average price is crossed over. Is it above the 200, um, mm -mm, above the 200, above the 20, and above the, um, the, 50, the 50 period moving average? So we've got this visual indication to say price is uh, above the 200, the 50 periods crossed over, we're above the 20, and we can look for these Bible dips. So I get this visual version as well, so I can zero in quite quite quickly, should I choose to. Anyway, the, the, the point, uh, once again, which uh, eludes me, is I can also, I can very quickly find possible candidates. So I've got all my bullish possible candidates here. I've got all my bearish possible candidates here. I've got a Bible dip on SQM here, over here. So SQM, I've got red, blue, blue. So price is below the 20 period move and average. Let's go and look at it. You see what I mean? And um, price is below the move and average. There's the, there's the 200, there's the 50, there's the 20. So price is rally, retreat, rally, retreat, rallying. It's back below the, the 20. It's coming back below the 50 period move and average. This is what a Bible dip looks like. If it wasn't already in a trade, I'm already in a trade. Um, but if I'm looking for a new trade, when it goes back above the 20 period move and average, it's not given a, a 50 period entry that when it goes back above 100, I can resume the uptrend. Should it resume the uptrend? So we've got this uh, very quick way to zero in on if I'm looking for a bullish trade. Well, SQM's giving me a dip worth buying. There we go. That's that dip worth buying. It's not an automatic buy. It needs to start moving back higher. What about a rally and a downtrend? Let's check out uh, AMAT. So if you need a rally and a downtrend, well, here we go. We can quickly just look down at the top 25 stocks. The average price has crossed over. There's the 200. There's the 50. Um, you know, we've got the price coming back to, there's the 50 period move and average. It's not an automatic sell when it goes back below 100, back below the 50. We've got our sellable rally in a downtrend. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. I've already got a little something on this, so I don't really need to worry about taking it. Do, do, do. Right, let's just uh, go through these setups again. The market's turning around, so we've got ISRG. What do you think? Is this a rally in a downtrend or a dip in an uptrend? Just catching up with the comments here while I'm uh, waiting for them. Uh, Brett, coming back to your earlier question, which I uh, missed, the the generally the definition of or my definition of a crash uh, adds an extra qualifier. As always, there's extra qualifiers, but generally, uh, um, the the sell off is twenty percent uh, down move or uh, is usually considered uh, bear and crash territory. To call it a crash, you need to add a time qualifier. So a twenty percent down move in a ten to fifty or you know twelve to fifteen day period is going to be a crash. And it's generally down to the speed of movement. So if you see a, a, a big move in a short amount of time, people will start talking about it as a crash. Let's just put some numbers to it. 20% in 15 days or less, let's call it a crash. And that's what I've qualified as crash when I've done a prior research, the, 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 the numbers that I mentioned earlier. Anything less than that, again, uh, usually around about 15%. Let's just say 15%. So 15% in the same time horizon. So about you know 10 to 15 days and 10 to 15% in 10 days. Uh, that would be called a correction. It's not crashing. It might be referred to as a flash crash, but I'll usually refer to that as a correction. Do, 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 rallying the downtrend. Absolutely, Chris. Perfect. Yeah. So 
So rallying a downtrend. So looking good. Um, again, I'm already again always early to the party. Again, we don't know that we're going to see the huge rally, uh, but nonetheless, I've already got a little bit of exposure on this. I generally use options in case you're wondering why I've not been stopped out. I use an option. I use the full price of the premium as my built-in stop loss. So the so the stop loss doesn't matter. My risk is defined. I've got plenty of time on the clock. So I'm just waiting to see if it resumes the downward movement. In just case you're wondering why I've not been stopped out, I don't traditionally get stopped out. Um, NXPI semiconductors. This is a, a breakout. Again, it's just pausing for the moment. Uh, and again, just waiting for the trend to resume. Uh, Apple is flipping on a flopping. It doesn't know what it wants to do. I think I will just generically call this a consolidation for the moment. But let's just do that now. Um, we've got criteria that we would qualify as a uh, consolidation. Uh, and usually when we have multiple crosses in the average price, um, we can start calling it a consolidation. But we've got multiple crosses. We've got wide swinging moves. I think it'd be best just to wait out and wait for a breakout. Uh, Amazon looks, again, very much like the market, a huge rally in a downtrend. Um, again, I've got high hopes for this to retest the lows. I think we are going to see it. Again, the data will tell us uh, whether we will or we won't. Again, we've also got the, the possibility of the short-term, the 60-minute chart version. So the new trades I'm going to be waiting for, for the moment, below $120, the 50-period moving average. I ignore the 20 when it's above the 50, just for reference. Um, but when it gets below there, uh, I can look at the 60 minute charts and probably get a slightly earlier entry, assuming that we're starting to see some bearish movements. Uh, BBWI, a little bit post earnings, uh, but again, has provided uh, some great trades uh, on the bear side um, for me this year. Uh, again, it might present a new opportunity very, very shortly. BFH, Bus Fair, uh, this is um, Bread Financial. Uh, it's a, it's, this is probably closer to setting up something new. Again, the algo is already live from a few weeks ago. It doesn't look like it's participated in the rally, uh, but because this uh, the algo has got uh, an entry fired off and we're right now below the algo entry, I don't need to wait for a new setup. Again, I could go short and be bearish below about $43. So that looks interesting. That looks good. Uh, Baidu is having a continued consolidation, attempted breakouts early in the year, back in May. Um, but nonetheless, it looks like it's resuming below $120. Uh, looks great for Baidu. CLF, a uh, little bit of a mess. We've got uh, the average price uh, giving us a new crossover just here on uh, CLF. This is below my threshold. I like typically like to trade stocks above $20. Uh, so the bearish trade, um, while it probably could sell off, it's not meeting my criteria. So I'll need to update my uh, top 25 just because it's below my threshold for bearish trades. Uh, HPQ. Oh, sorry, HP Inc. Again, we've got the average price crossing over. Previous consolidation over here. So this looks like a great candidate. We're very close to a bear setup. So below $33 for the moment would get me bearish on HPQ. Uh, Jeffries, again, one of my favorites, actually. It looks like it's changing direction. Again, the average price has crossed over, but we're now above the 200. So I've got it. It's in limbo again, very much like the markets. Uh, for bearish trades, I'd need to see price go below $30 uh, to provide a, a bearish setup. Again, the 50 period moving average before I would consider that. Uh, Marv Marvell. Average price has crossed. Oops, a daisy, wrong one. Uh, average price has crossed over already. Again, we've got a nice rallying downtrend, not hugely deep compared to the indexes. Below $50 would provide a new entry setup if I need. Again, I'm already in this just for reference. Um, again, Ring Central, again, looking lovely. We've got this low base consolidation, did not participate in the rally, which is quite nice to see, which might suggest that if we are going to see a downswing in the markets, this could go pretty hard and pretty fast. We've seen it sell off quite, quite violently in the past. So that could uh, indicates a, a strong bearish move because it didn't participate in the broad market rally that we've just seen. Uh, SIG, uh, again, rallying a downtrend, unsurprisingly. Uh, move below uh, $60 would get me participating in that. Again, can you see, more than anything, rather than think about, oh, you know, think about the analysis, I'm using the framework that I mentioned earlier. The average prices are bearish. They have crossed over. Um, price is between the 50 and the 200. That is my sellable rally. When it goes back below the 50, 
and the 200 at the same time, $60, that would be my bearish trigger, my bearish indication. There's a few extra nuances that give me precise entry details, a little bit beyond the time that we've got today, but does anyone get the point here? It's like when you've got a structure, when you've got a framework, and you've got a list of stocks that are proven with the back-tested algo, all you're doing is you're waiting for the setups. Uh, SLG, we've had some great trades on this this year. Uh, initially, the breakouts, there's the consolidation, multiple crossing the average price. Uh, there's the first trade, wallop. And second trade, again, doesn't look like it participated in the, the huge rally. Um, but nonetheless, below if, you, if I was looking for a new trade, below $47 would be where I would be looking for. Uh, last one, X. X going to give it to you. I promise you I won't wrap. I'm probably going to have to uh, take this off. This is very similar to uh, CLF in that um, the average price has crossed over. I normally like a threshold of above $20. We're only a cat's whisker away. The 50 period is... Um, just above $20 at the moment. So again, I probably won't be taking that bearish, um, but there's other things that I have to, again, it's just more of a personal preference, that threshold. Um, I, I'm, I'm, we'll finish on the bullish trades. Uh, so they're all the bearish trades. So we've got plenty of candidates. Let's check out ABC. Guess what? It's a buyable dip in an uptrend rally retracement. So the algos fired off at $146. You've got a lovely little price action entry if you want to join the move right there. Uh, but nonetheless, buy the dip in the context of a trend. All states is in a consolidation. It's a wait for the breakout situation. Uh, generally speaking, the energy sector is um, all bullish and all resuming. So you've got, again, another buy the dip. This is ConocoPhillips. Buy the dip in an uptrend. CVX, guess what? Buy the dip in an uptrend. Algo's just firing off again. LNG, guess what? Buy the dip in an uptrend. Oh, it's actually rallying in an uptrend. My apologies. Um, so you've got a rally in the context of an uptrend. So this is waiting for, sorry, the, the I'll, I'll just close the trade on this actually. Um, so this is a uh, the algo. It's fired off there. Do, 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 do. So the rally, this is a rally in an uptrend. So we want to dip in an uptrend. So buy, the first buyable dip will be back at $150 when it's between the moving averages. So it's not, uh, it's not, no, it's just not yet. Uh, so maybe if the market does sell off, which I'm hoping it does, this will provide the dip uh, that we need on LNG to get back in on the trade. So we go. So there's my uh, current top 25. There's um, a small number of uh, bullish trades. There's more bearish trades than we can shake a stick at, unsurprisingly. And let's get back to the uh, the markets. Uh, so the S and P continues to sell off. Um, and looking great again. We're just seeing price again. Just flipped over to the 60 minute charts. We've seen price go challenge the uh, the 200 period moving average on the 60 minute chart. I think when we dip below that, or we, uh, we should probably do that today. Um, but when it goes below it, um, it will present uh, the first opportunity for bearish candidates. And again, probably see next week, we'll see the 50 cross below the 200, and that will be the short term to get that. Um, uh, directional bias will flip to bearish on the lower time frames, and then I'll be looking to sell the rally in downtrends on the 60 minute charts uh, when or if that happens. And if it doesn't happen, uh, then I'm waiting for price to go back above about you know four uh, uh, four thousand two hundred eighty uh, forty two eighty. I didn't say that Phil around about forty two eighty. I'm just uh, averaging out for the moment about forty two eighty. Uh, before resuming a bullet trend. So right now, I don't think we're going to see anything. Um, it's also uh, option expiration dates. P market's probably going to be a little bit sloppy uh, anyway. So, you know, if you don't see anything that looks great or is uh, uh, half assed half measured, I wouldn't worry about it for the moment. Uh, but nonetheless, that's where we're at for the moment. Again, we've got a good roundup of uh, what we're doing. A uh, nice roundup of the strategy across multiple time frames. Uh, plenty of swing trade candidates that are almost there on both the bullish side and the bearish side. Uh, and that's where we find ourselves for the moment. That was, where's my, where's my slides? That was uh, the swing trading, swing trading strategy revealed and uh, with the historical back testing and all the gubbins to go with it. Right. I'm uh, almost, well, I was going to say I'm almost on time for a change, but I'm a little bit over from a time point of view. Um, but before we do sign off, what was your what was your biggest takeaway? Is there any ahas? Is there anything that caught your attention? Was there anything interesting? Um, please feel free to share with the group.
which as you know is code for it's now time for a quick wet the whistle drink. Absolutely random. Not every dip is a Bible dip. Your aha moment is that you're back. That's very funny. <laughs> yeah, Randall saying not every dip is a Bible dip. And Chris is, what have we got here? Refocus on the core stuff and the basics. Yeah, I've already slapped your wrist once today, haven't I, Chris? <laughs> it's not broken. You don't need to fix it. I need a slide for that. I, I, I've got a slide for that somewhere. It's not broken. You don't need to fix it. I've done all the hard work for you. You don't need to tinker with it. <laughs> it ain't broken. <laughs> right, folks, um, as we're over time, let's think about signing off. Um, there's only one thing left to say, which is thank you. Um, we could all be doing other things with our time and our attention. Absolutely. Friday, fun day. Um, but, you know, it really is appreciated. I don't um, take it for granted that you've all decided to spend some time with me here today. It really is appreciated. It makes the days and the sessions better. Uh, I truly enjoy trying to give back to the community as much as possible. Um, you know, and if you do need some extra help, if you want to go further, faster, um, with some assistance, you do have the choice to work with me. Uh, it's not essential. I, again, I give as much away as possible that makes sense. But if you want to go further, faster, if you want access to the, um, the, the, the specific tools, the rules, and the software that I use, um, again, shoot me a message. Uh, and again, if it's right, we'll talk about it. If it's not right for you, I'll always point you off in the right direction. So once again, thank you for spending some time with me today. Uh, the only thing that I would ask, if you've got everything that you needed from today's session, just do it. Just go and do it. Go and find opportunities. Go buy the dips. Go sell the rallies. Uh, buy range lows, sell range highs, break of range highs to break of range lows. There's only six things that we can do. There's actually two more. There's actually eight. Um, I just don't like doing them, which is counter trend trading. I know, Kevin, you do. Um, but I just don't like doing it. It doesn't sit well with my personality. There's only um, six patterns from a trending and breakout opportunity for us to do so. Again, just go and do it. Make sure that uh, you're consistent with your application of the process. That you know the, the, the real secret to everything is consistency. So just do it and make sure it happens. Again, if you've got any questions, shoot me a message. Uh, so with that said, uh, it's game over. Time to, uh, as uh, Perry said, um, it's fun day, it's Friday, let's go and do something interesting. Uh, on that note, before I do sign off, what have you got planned? What have you got planned for the weekend? I know what I'm doing. I'm going to a, a Queen versus Fleetwood Mac rooftop party. Uh, that sounds like uh, jolly fun. <clears throat> so I'm getting dressed up as Freddie Mercury and... Um, my wife is uh, getting dressed up in a Fleetwood Mac uh, styled outfit. So we're going to have a Queen and Fleetwood Mac off. <laughs> and it's going to be lots of fun. So, yeah, that's my plan for later today. And, um, and obviously fun and, I fun and ice cream over the weekend. <laughs> Absolutely, Zeke. I'm sure I'll share something. I'm sure I'll do something suitably embarrassing um, with the photos, like being in my... Um, uh, last week it was the uh, Flamingo Tutu, wasn't it? <laughs> awesome, Brett, awesome. Right, folks, let's do it. Let's um, let's dock the boat. Let's land the plane. Let's charge the Tesla. Let's sign off. Uh, whatever you're doing for the weekends, make sure you have plenty of fun, enjoyment, spend time with loved ones, uh, go and enjoy the sunshine, uh, have an ice cream. Uh, just take a moment to reflect on life and enjoy yourself uh, because that is pretty much what I try and do with my life. Dinner with friends for a birthday. Oh, awesome, Zeke. Uh, Perry's saying uh, daughter's got the first football match. So you're cheerleading. I want to see you with them. Um, uh, tutu and pom-pom, Perry. <laughs> pom-pom, Perry. <laughs> have a great one folks i will see you all at the same time next time uh, and have as always a wonderful weekend <laughs>